thou, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Let every man be swift to hear and slow to anger. For the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. Wherefore, casting away all uncleanness and abundance of naughtiness, with meekness receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Words taken from the lesson this morning for this fourth Sunday after Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Need it be said, the world is not at peace. Has it ever been? The world today in our time is not at rest. Why? Because it's not listening to God. They have forgotten God. Systematically removed him. Instead, he's tuned out, isn't he? Today with myriad of distractions. A deluge of media, radio, iPads, iPods, I, I, I. Me, 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 right? That's what that eye's on there for. It's about me, not about God. Lots of internet, smartphones, TV, movies, lots of distractions. As a result, almost every man of our times is slow to hear and swift to anger, causing many to give in to all sorts of uncleanness and abundance of naughtiness. Once again, the mass media that lovely city in America, Hollywood. And news blogs, internet, provide for this in abundance in almost every movie and on nearly every popular website. It's unavoidable, it seems. Tons of distractions, tons of uncleanness. As a result, the word of God, which is able to save man's soul, is not easily engrafted. And as St. James notes, anger rises up and worketh in the world uncleanness, vice, naughtiness. Now, focusing on this vice of anger today, we turn to St. John Cassian. He died in the year 434. He comes to our aid. Interviewing many desert fathers, he tells us that anger is a deadly poison. A deadly poison poison that must be totally uprooted from the depths of our soul. For as long as it resides in our hearts and blinds our mind's eye with its harmful darkness, we shall not be able to acquire the judgment of proper discretion, nor to possess a good contemplative vision or immature counsel. Okay, thank you, John Cashin. Anger brings blindness we know it, who've experienced it. It brings darkness to our judgment. The scriptures say, my eye has been disturbed by anger. King David in the Psalms. Disturbing our eyes, anger leads us to draw unjust conclusions, make rash judgments, give way to suspicions, which in turn leads to making bad choices for ourselves and give bad advice to others. But it also causes us to waste lots of time and lots of energy is used up in anger and valuable suffering is lost in anger. This is true. Thus, St. James says, the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. What is more, the angry man always thinks he's right. This is part of the problem. When we're angry, we're like, I'm right. No one's going to convince me I'm wrong. And we've got to convince ourselves all worked out why we're right and they're wrong. Can't reach an angry person easily. This makes it very difficult to correct him. God had to unhorse St. Paul and even blind him for a spell to help him overcome his rage. Truly, anger is a deadly poison. And this is why there's a final judgment at the end. And this is why the Holy Ghost must come to convict us. That is, he has to come to convince us of sin. The hardness of man's heart. The hardness of his head. Very hard. 
Thus, there must be a final judgment. It's a capital sin, anger is. That means it's like a fountain of evil. It bubbles up. That's why they mean by capital sin. It leads to all sorts of other sins. This is why St. John Cassian calls it the deadly poison of anger. It opens the door of the soul to additional sinning. And this is why St. Paul says, the sun should not go down upon your anger, and you should not give a place to the devil. St. John Cassian writes, certainly the mind, rightfully called a sun, because it surveys all the thoughts and judgments of the heart, it must not be extinguished by the vice of anger. Otherwise, when it goes down in the darkness of disturbances along with their author, the devil, occupies our heart's understanding and we have been possessed by the darkness of anger as if we were in the depths of night, we shall not know how we are to act. We won't know what to do that's right. Thank you, John Cashin. In other words, we will easily commit sin upon sin as if we were drunk, gossiping, exaggerating, falling into impurity, drinking, overeating, wasting time, sloth, and indulgences of all sorts. Listen to St. John Cashin make the connection. As a person progresses in mildness and patience of heart, so also does he in purity of body. And the further he has driven away the passion of anger, the more tightly will he hold on to chastity. There's a connection between anger and intemperance. Be warned, anger easily compounds and leads to more anger if we don't get it under control. We even get angry for being angry. Thus, to leave oneself in the hands of anger is a very dangerous thing. You might as well mount a powerful horse that refuses to obey the bit. It will end up carrying you whithersoever it pleases. What are we going to do? Well, before we discuss some of those remedies that are so helpful to overcoming this vice, anger, if it's not dealt with in a virtuous manner, leads to bitter memories. Let's be convinced that all anger needs to go away. Even good anger, in a way, has to be controlled or averted. So once again, if it's not dealt with in a virtuous manner, it'll lead to bitter memories. We don't want those. They're called resentments. And they haunt us our whole life. St. John Cashin refers to it as a brooding, a brooding over the offense in the heart. Or listen, to the digesting of the offense within ourselves in glum silence. This is why anger turned inwards. Listen to this. This is why anger turned inwards often leads to depression, sadness, and even to despair. St. John says that such suppressed anger in one's heart excludes the splendid radiance of the Holy Ghost. In other words, it prevents prayer. It prevents contemplation. Listening to God and responding to his word. As St. James says in the lesson today, is so necessary to saving our souls. And this is why St. Aloysius Gonzaga and all the saints with them say, in troubled waters, the devil always finds fish to catch. If he's upset your soul, he's going to go a-fishing. Oh, how true it is. Anger is a deadly poison. The saints go so far as to say to yield to anger is never profitable to ourselves or to others. Once again, it's a waste of energy, a waste of time, and a waste of suffering. If it produce no other evil, the saints tell us it robs us of peace. The disturbance of mind, which we give way on account of the maltreatment we receive from others or the injustice we perceive, it's normally the cause of our anger. You've hurt me. You've done me wrong. Is more hurtful to us than the injury they gave us. Often the anger is worse. Listen to Seneca. He says, my anger will hurt me more than their insults and injustices. Thus, he who indulges anger when an affront is offered to him 
is a cause of pain to himself. St. Augustine, thou hast decreed, O Lord, that the soul that is inordinate should be its own torment. The soul that is inordinate, it's overdone it, it's overreacted, should be its own torment. Thus, St. Francis de Sales, he teaches that no matter how just the reason for our anger, it is always expedient to restrain it. St. Augustine says that once anger enters the soul, it is difficult to expel it. And so he exhorts us to close the door to anger so that it cannot enter. St. John Cashin says the same. He says, patience does not achieve its goal in righteous anger. It consists rather in not getting angry at all. Listen to the advice of St. Francis de Sales. If possible, never become angry and always reject any pretext for allowing anger to gain admission to your heart. But you may say, but Father, it's a just anger. Arr, this guy deserves it. Think about all the generals down through history. The best of the generals were as calm as could be in the midst of all the battles they fought. And they won. It's the calmness that brought the victory. You get angry, you lose. St. John Cashin then goes on. The perfect medicine for this disease is that we realize first that in no way are we permitted to get angry, whether for an unjust or a just cause knowing that we shall at once lose the light of discretion and firm and correct counsel. We need to flee from anger as best we can. So that's our first remedy. We close the door to it if we can. No, I'm not going to get angry. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to take a little walk. I'm not going to let it take a hold of me. How about another remedy? Another helpful remedy is this. Truth. We heard it in the lesson today. We heard it in the gospel today. How important truth is. A truth is defined as the conformity between thought and thing. There's a conformity between what I know. Inside of me and outside of me. The key word is conformity. The human intellect designed by God is made to seek truth and separate it from what is false. Truth purifies and perfects the intellect of man. If the intellect is confronted with inconsistencies, lies, deceptions, changes that ought not be, alterations that ought not be, we've been through enough of that this year, it's thrown off balance, which can easily lead to anger until these falsehoods and evils are reconciled or harmonized or divided from the good and the true. Once again, this is why there's a final judgment. Seek, therefore, applying this to ourselves, to fill our minds with truth, doctrine, good things. Open your catechism. Open your, your spiritual books, your lives of the saints. Read about what is true. Open the Bible. This is true, and it calms your mind. It will ameliorate your anger. Thus, St. James says in the lesson today, Dearly beloved, every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change or shadow of alteration. There's no change in God. There's no change in his doctrine. That brings peace. Using anger for good is also possible. Sometimes it's unavoidable due to our human nature. So if we do get angry, God forbid, it is a sure sign that we're outside of our duties of our state in life. It's time to correct that. God always protects us and gives us grace when we're fulfilling our duties. Look back on your moments of anger. What were we doing? Making some judgment that was not ours to make? Making some correction that wasn't ours to make? Doing something we weren't supposed to be doing? Get back to doing your duties and you'll find the anger will lift and even the memory of it will be purified. God is good. He will grant grace when we do his will. 
Or this anger is also, we should say, a sure sign of some previous violation of duties. Someone's violating their duties somewhere if we're getting angry. Some soft spot or wound has been touched in our souls. Thus, we fight back. You touched my soft spot. Pow! Right? Reflect upon these past moments of anger. They're filled, folks, with information about what you need to work on, what I need to work on, rather than what is wrong with the world and those around us. They often show us who needs forgiving in the past because they violated their duties and hurt us. They show us what needs to be healed while we're still alive on the way. That's good information, folks. You want that. Instead of living with it all your life, you work with it and overcome it. In commenting on the passage from the scriptures that says, be angry, but do not sin, St. Augustine says, if we have to find ourselves angry, if we find ourselves angry, then be angry at sin. Be angry at past sins, your own sins. In this way, we avoid getting angry at people and at ourselves by which we lose our peace. If we do get angry, let's use it up, that anger, on something good. In other words, making reparation. I deserve this. I'm going to go mow the lawn now. I'm going to go clean the garage. I'm going to go wash the car. I'm going to use up my anger in a good way. Make reparation for my past sins. I'm going to channel it to overcoming sins and putting more order into our lives. This is a good cause. Use it well. Now, the saints understood everything to come from the hand of God. There's another remedy. Even when being pushed and punished and mistreated by others, they saw all as coming from the hand of God. And since we just honored St. Catherine of Siena, we can find it in her final testament. Blessed Raymond of Capua, her spiritual director and her first author of her life, he said that in the light of faith, she had seen quite clearly that everything that happened to herself and everyone else came from God and not from hatred, but from great love that he has for his creatures. In this way, the saints like Catherine prevented anger from rising up in the first place. They saw all as coming from God. When St. Gerard was being beaten by his master Taylor, and they said, why did you smile when you're being beaten? He says, oh, I just saw it all as being from God's hand. But the ultimate remedy, folks, and we'll end with the ultimate remedy, is this. We should know it. We draw near to the blood of his majesty, our Lord and Savior. If we do not receive this blood in baptism and confession and holy communion, and participate in his passion through the mass, we will, willy-nilly, willed or not, end up shedding the blood of others sooner or later. We'll become so angry. If we do not shed the blood of Christ, as he has given it to us to shed, as it were, ritually in the mass, we represent Calvary, then we'll shed other people's blood. That's amazing. The more the world turns away from the mass, the more angry and violent it will become. In his blood is our peace, says St. Paul. He said, he made peace through the blood of his cross. Thus, frequent attendance at the Holy Mass can calm the angry soul, especially at consecration. Beg and plead God to take away your resentments, your anger. This thought is captured in the prayers at the foot of the altar where we find the solution to our souls when they are cast down by our worldly problems, that we should take heart and be hopeful and go unto the altar of God to recover the joy of our youth. Here we can think of a saint, St. Januarius. He was Bishop of Naples, who was martyred under Diocletian in the year 304 or 305. He was first cast to the wild beasts, but they would not kill him. When a man is calm and at peace on the inside, he conquers the world on the outside and the beasts calm down around him. Some would even lick his feet 
as they did with the other martyrs. They represented the inner calm that existed in this saintly bishop. And so they beheaded him. Since he was greatly revered, they gathered his blood in a vial and kept his relics. Amazingly, ever since the year 1389, on this his feast day, September 19th, whenever the blood of St. John Uarius is brought in proximity to his head, the blood liquefies and even boils or bubbles. This has been studied by scientists and it defies all explanation. Now, keeping with our topic today, I think this event is very significant. If you've ever had your blood boiling in anger, you know what I'm talking about. When someone gets really angry, we say his blood is boiling. If this boiling blood is not kept under control by a cool head, it can easily become like a volcano. It should be used up in some way that is constructive if it cannot be avoided. If not, it invades the rational powers and enlists them to do something spiteful, vengeful, terrible. St. John Uarius is invoked as a protector from volcanoes since he has protected Naples from Mount Vesuvius on more than one occasion. Maybe we could call on him when our blood boils and we're about to erupt into who knows what. St. Januarius shows us that we need a cool head to control boiling blood. The coolest head is that of Christ, the head of the church, and it can be found in the mass. Bring your boiling blood to cool at the mass and by meditating frequently upon the passion, especially in the rosary and the stations of the cross. Employing these remedies, we will not easily give way to anger, but bring our boiling blood into contact with the infinitely cool and peaceful head of Jesus Christ. For the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. O oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.